The 43-year-old mother of the boys that violently, brutally raped and stomped Benjamin's head in for 45 minutes was there when the boys were burning his clothes. <gasps> Welcome to Talk Murder to Me. My name is John, and with me is Jen and Nicole. Hello. Hi. Tonight we are doing a hometown murder, what we call taco specials, for one of our taco supremos. Hi, you guys. It's Shannon. And mm-hmm. my hometown murder Other is Shannon. called... I, I don't even know what it's called. It's just fucking horrible. Um, it's one of the stories that starts out as bad and then just keeps getting worse. Um, and it's pretty recent. It happened in June. And I guess oh. you could say it's about how evil exists even before you can get a driver's license. Oh. Um, it's kind of like a modern day Lord of the Flies. Oh, Anyway, um, if this doesn't make you give up on humanity, I, <laughs> I'm not sure what would. Um, there you go. Hope you guys are well. Bye. All right. That was from our Talco Supremo and very good friend, Shannon. Shannon in Seattle. Shannon in Seattle. Oh, if Shannon's requesting this, this is going to be good. It's a really good episode. She, um, so it's local to her home in Seattle. It's, well, it, it actually is about a hundred miles away from where Seattle is. We are going to Randall, Washington which is in the lower part of Washington. Mm. I think I'm saying it right. Randall or Randall? Randall? Probably Randall, I would guess. Randall. So we are going to Randall, Washington, which is in the lower part of Washington tonight. And this, as Shannon said, is a very tragic story. I mean, just from her little description, sounds pretty effed up. The town is extremely small. We're talking 1,700 people that live in this town. Oh, wow. That might be the smallest town we've covered yet. Yeah. And we are looking right now, I'm showing them Ben Eastman's Facebook page. So we're going to look at some of his photos and everything. Now, he actually went missing. And this happened last year. Okay, so June 24th, well, actually June 23rd, real late night, after midnight, is the last time anyone has seen Ben Eastman. And here is a missing poster. So I'm putting all the pictures on talkmurder.com, so be sure to go there. Even if you're not a Talko Supremo, I'm still putting the pictures on there so you guys can see what's what we're looking at here. Obviously, don't go there if you're driving a car. True. That would not be safe. This is a photo of Ben Eastman. Oh, okay. So okay. he goes missing. So he's he's a teenager? Yeah, he's 16. Actually, when he went missing, he just turned 16 less than a week before... And he goes missing. And I'm I was going to say, he looks super young in one of those photos. That one. He looks like... Yeah, Celtics. Well, he's a Blue huge Miami. dolphin. Yeah, he's a huge dolphin. Last, it's interesting uh, sports takes being from Washington, Boston basketball. Well, they don't have a, Miami a basketball team anymore. Huh. The Seattle Supersonics moved to Oklahoma City, Thunder. Hmm. Um, they don't have a football team. Oh, yes, they do. Yeah, Seattle do. Seahawks. Duh. Hello. Benjamin Eastman the third. Okay. His mm-hmm. father's also named Benjamin. So don't. The third. Yeah. So the third. He was last seen by his father. Now, this was June 23rd. Ben was at his dad's house. They were playing his favorite video game, Rocket League, which is on PlayStation. If you guys know your video games. What is Rocket League? I never really played it. I, I, I can I know what the case looks like, but I think it's a racing game or something. Hmm. So they're playing his favorite video game, Rocket League, until 3 a.m. until they both decide to go to bed. Now, the dad and Ben are literally like best friends. And yeah. you'll hear later in the story, we're going to be watching some Dr. Phil videos, so you'll be able to see his dad. Gosh, Dr. Phil covers everything, doesn't yeah. he? Dr. Phil played an April Fool's Day joke yesterday where he pretended to shave off his mustache and it looked really creepy. Oh. Wait, how do you pretend to shave it? He like CGI'd it. Oh, he he, he took a picture of him with like covering it with mustache, and then like an after effect, it was like CGI, but it was April Fool's. That's, That's weird. That's funny. What do you? I we should see we it. should look at this. Yeah. Google it. Oh shit! He did the whole thing. Let me see. Hold on. Oh God. Oh yeah, it doesn't look. He good looks on creepy. Him. So yeah. that's CGI or whatever. Yeah. I mean, I guess you could do that on Photoshop. Okay, so you want to? This is kind of. 
um, somewhat related. So, yeah, because you can tell he. My yeah. so my dad growing up, he always had a mustache. In fact, like almost all of my uncles on his side of the family have mustaches. It's just like I don't know. It's just like a Laporte men thing, I guess. And he's got five brothers, so they like all had mustaches, and he had a mustache. No goatee, just mustache. All mustaches. Is it like the handlebar? No, they were all just like normal mustaches, not thin, just like full, like like a Dr. Phil mustache. And after, right after my ma, after he left my mom and they split up, he shaved the mustache, and like, and now like he's just clean shaven. But it's so weird because I don't recognize him. It's and so it's like kind of symbolic. He's like a different person. I don't talk to him. But it's like, I don't know. Isn't that weird? Yeah. Just like to go your whole life, especially because he had a mustache when back when he and my mom got married. So he had a mustache from like 1975 to 2009. Wow. And then to just have it not be there is weird. It's like weird. Yeah. It's creepy. Anyway, <laughs> when Ben's dad woke up, Ben was not in the house. Okay, so they went to bed around three. Now, this isn't really unusual because, as you'll hear the dad say uh, later, he was a 16 year old kid. He's got a lot of friends. You know, he's a dirt biker, ATV kind of guy or whatever. He's no, really bra. sociable, and the town's so small that he can go travel around or whatever, and everyone knows everyone. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big deal that he wasn't there. Ben was actually officially reported missing on June 27th, but as soon... It's like four days later. Yeah, but the family, including the dad, is like the, the one that really pushed this case. But from June 24th is when he goes missing. It's like June 23rd, June 24th, like in the early wee hours, mm -hmm. until the, the 27th. Friends and family were, like, calling his phone and everything. No one could get in touch with him. It just seems like an awfully long time to wait. No, I mean, they weren't waiting. They were just... Well, I don't... To get police involved? Well, I mean, so Ben, you know, he would go to his mother's house, his stepbrother's house. You know what I'm saying? Like, he would... Bounce around. Bounce around, yeah. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, they really were calling him, and they they really did get worried. And if, on the 27th of June is when they officially reported him missing. Okay. Now, so basically this story is laid out easiest going straight down the timeline. Okay. Okay, that's what I figured out. On June 28th, they found a shallow grave. They were like digging around. They found a foot and they pulled him out and that was him. Keep in mind that this was one less than one week after his 16th birthday. Yeah. Now, self, so they go and police look at cell phone records, right? Mm -hmm. That's what they do. It showed that Ben, after playing video games with his dad texted one of his good friends, Benito Marquez. Okay, Marquez. he goes by Benny, mm -hmm. B-E-N-N-Y. He's 16. They're like best friends. Like truly best friends, or he's only a best friend at certain times when he needs uh, them? Like an Andrew Cunanan best friend? <laughs> yeah, uh, sure. Like, you know, yeah. maybe he's like his drug friend, drug no, dealer friend. I was or... going to get into this later, but truly best friends. Okay. Um, he, They're both 16. Best friends... From kindergarten, kind oh, of best friends, okay. mm. right? Like inseparable yeah. best friends. And a town that's small. They're like brothers. They've yeah. known each other So long. their families, both the families, treated each of the kids like their own son. Yeah. That's how close they were. Yeah. Cell phone records showed that Ben, after playing video games with his dad, texted Benito Marquez, Benny, Benito, invited Ben to go camping with him. Now it's three in the freaking morning. Hmm. To go and camping? To go camping, yeah. yeah. You know, they're 16 years old. They're teenagers. He's like, hey, I'm out of 10. Come join there. me. They may know. be out there smoking some reefer. You know what I'm saying? That it, yeah. that makes sense to me. out there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Well, to go... Probably if, not at 16. No, but like it's easier to get. Yeah. Them. Yeah. I remember... Just pull like, a hay mister, you know? Yeah, I remember... <laughs> Like one of my friends, Daniel, would always be like, yo, let's go camping. And basically that's like, hey, let's go smoke some weed. 
Yeah. So camping may mean smoking weed. But then again, they actually went into the woods. So I'm pretty sure. I don't know they what I'm talking about. They could have went into the woods and smoked weed. Who knows? Now, but anyway, maybe these kids don't do drugs. Who knows? Yeah. Benny tells police that Benjamin never showed up when they went to go camping. Huh. Now, on June 28, 2 in the morning, he posted this on his Facebook wall. If you want to read that. He is already, he's declared missing earlier this that day, right? Please, he, right? He, he's already. No, he, he was reported missing on the 27th. Okay. They found his body on the 28th. This is the 28th, like at two in the morning. So they found the body later that day. Okay. Yeah. Please, if you hear anything about him or where he is. Or where he's at, notify BJ Eastman and send your prayers out for his family. BJ is the dad. Yes. So okay. it's a missing child poster. I wish I could see the comments. Hmm. But I couldn't find anyone that actually got it before it was taken down. There, but you see it has uh, oh, 338 oh. comments, right? Hmm. Now, the reason I was looking at that is because the comments originally were from concerned friends and like, Oh yeah, I, I, you know he's been missing for days. Like we need to find him, and then those comments, those three hundred thirty six comments, turn from concern to accusations because that day, that same day, now this is at two a.m. in the morning. Later that day, I should say, police put out a press release saying they were searching for sixteen year old Benny Marquez. Marquez. The, Marquez, the guy that just posted on his own wall, if you got any information. His best friend since kindergarten. His best friend since kindergarten. So do you all want to take a guess what happened? Well, it sounds like Mr. Benny killed Ben, which is confusing with all these names. Are you going to call him Benito? Benito. Yeah. Let me show you Benito. Kills Ben. I'm assuming Benito is also 16. I think yeah, you said that. they're both 16. That's him. Looks like a little Bieber. Yeah. A little brown-haired Bieber. Yeah, brown-haired Bieber. 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 Brown-haired Bieber. All right, you guys like this story? Uh-huh. Mm. All right, well, you're not going to. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we're, you know, we really shouldn't necessarily like any of the stories that we do. But yeah. nevertheless, sometimes we do. I liked the Gypsy Rose one. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh, I do want to say... If you look at the missing child flyer, and Dr. Phil pointed this out to me, not personally. <laughs> Hello, John. He's like, John, you're going to do that podcast tonight, right? I want to tell you this one thing. So Dr. Phil says... "So You um, never know. Someday he may be doing that for us. Re- read Wouldn't that again. Wild? Read his post again. Um, please, if you hear anything about him or where he's at... N- Notify B.J. Eastman and send prayers out for his family. Okay, so Dr. Phil says, if you hear anything about him, okay, they've been friends since kindergarten, Mm -hmm. saying the word him instead of his name is a huge red flag, according to Dr. Phil. Yeah. Interesting. Now, that's like psychology stuff, but that's what he says, and I think it's... That makes sense. I didn't pick up on yeah, that. that makes, but... Yeah, that makes sense because it's it's less personal yeah. than saying Benny. But if you're looking ben, at it, whatever. if you're looking at it and you don't know the whole context, like if you don't think that this kid had anything involved, you wouldn't notice it. You know what I'm saying? Hmm. I agree. I didn't, I didn't pick up on that. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed more of like the where, like the informality of like where he's at. Yeah. It just seemed that... That that's the only thing I picked up on is like seemed a little casual, due to the urgent, like knowing the urgency of it. But yeah, that was just my only take on it. Saying and send prayers out for his family instead of saying like send prayers that we find him safely or something like that. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, no, you're right because it's almost like he's already dead. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, so I mean, yeah, I see what you're saying. That's a good point. Doctor Phil didn't bring up that point. That's a good point. Dr. Phil, you're more than welcome to quote us on that one. <laughs> you do an update Dr. on Jen. this story. Dr. Jen. The police put out a press release saying that they are searching for a 16-year-old Benny Marquez and his 21-year-older brother. Mm. 21-year-old older 21-year-old older brother. 21-year-old brother. And his 21-year-old brother, Jonathan, 
spelled J-O-N-A-T-H-O-N. It's weird that never people seen do one spell that. Like I, that. I Jonathan. Have. Jonathan Adamson. They're stepbrothers. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. They just become best friends. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the older brother got them some cannabis. Uh, yep. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. I don't know if you guys can tell this or not, but I'm trying to, like, work myself up to how horrible this is. <laughs> <sighs> <sighs> I'm trying to, like, almost get prepared, but it's... Were they fighting over a girl? It's coming. Did he get raped? It's, it's coming. Oh, no. Detectives received a tip that there was a shallow grave on a remote property belonging to Benny's grandfather. Oh. So keep in mind, Benny and Jonathan are brothers. Keep that in mind the whole time. Jonathan is Step 21. Brothers. Yes. Benny is 16. Mm-hmm. And then Benjamin Eastman, I'm going to call him Benjamin from now on to get... Yep. He's 16 too. Yep. The first grave they found from the tip, the police found... Was empty, completely empty. So the police actually... They found a, two, more than one grave? The police went to Benny and Jonathan, and they claimed that they dug that grave because their dog died. Even Where's though there was dog? no dog to be found. Okay, obviously the cops are like, okay, you, you should probably tell us the truth. You know what I'm saying? Now detectives continue to search... And then they actually found the actual grave site of Ben of Benjamin Eastman. It was a shallow grave. They pulled his foot out first, and the shallow grave actually had sticks marking it in the shape of a cross. Uh-huh. That's weird. Also, it's like, like not, not a good even, hiding place. Yeah, I mean, they're identifying yeah. it. Yeah. It's weird. Benny Marquez and his older brother, Jonathan Adamson, was arrested. They were trying to skip town. Hmm. They were arrested on June 29th in Ellensburg, which is east mm-hmm. of Washington. Is that where, um, actually, I think I think our, some we have some other Taco Supremos up there. I believe Tyler and Jeremy are up in near Ellensburg. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Are you sure? I believe so. Mm. Tyler, that was a freaking awesome story that you requested. Mm-hmm. I love all the Taco specials, all the requests. I love them all. The Axeman. But that was a really cool story, and I really enjoyed doing that story. Mm-hmm. You know, that was like not fun. Like no murder is fun, but I guess like after a long period when the victims have already been dead yeah. for a hundred years, it's Different. more easy to talk. It, you it, know, what I'm saying? it loses its like personal connection. Yeah. On June 29th in Ellensburg, both Benny Marquez and Jonathan Adamson was arrested. They were 125 miles away from Randall. Hmm. They were basically skipping town. Okay, they didn't get very far. Now, both brothers were arrested for second degree murder. All right, let me get to this. Second I'm going to just get degree. right through this. Second degree, we talked about this last time, not premeditated. Not, yeah. They were initially arrested for second degree murder. They may have some other charges here by the time we finish this. Oh. Let me just try to get through this. Wish me luck. Benny Marquez and his brother Jonathan Adamson has both been charged in Benjamin Eastman's death, and they're facing an identical set of charges. First-degree murder. Hmm. First-degree rape. <gasps> tampering the, with physical you did evidence. You that. Shit. And unlawful disposal of remains. Both brothers lured Ben oh, no. into the oh, woods no. and murdered him. Court documents say Adamson, the 21-year-old, told detectives once they were in the woods... The two brothers pushed the 16-year-old Benjamin Eastman to the ground, kicked him, and stoned him (gasps) repeatedly more than 100 times (gasps) in the body and the face for the time of about 45 minutes. Oh, my word. Okay. That's just unnecessary. Adamson quotes, We knew that he would not suspect that we were going to kill him and use that trust to our advantage. At one point, Eastman gets free when they were kicking him on the ground, beating the shit out of him to death. He gets free. He runs to the assailant's car, locks himself inside. Adamson then unlocks the vehicle. Keep that in mind, too. Adamson unlocks the vehicle, pulls him back out onto the ground, resumes beating him to death. Adamson, the older brother, 21-year-old, then takes a box cutter and <gasps> cuts 
Ah. Eastman's back open (gasps) while he's on the ground face down. Next, while Benjamin Eastman, now he's been hit more than 100 times for about 45 minutes going through pure torture. After he got cut open with a box cutter and he's still alive, both the brothers find a random stick on the ground and they violently rape Benjamin Eastman while he's still alive. With the stick? With a big stick. Marquez, Benny Marquez, the 16-year-old brother, holds the head and the shoulders while the older brother, Adamson, pulled down Ben's trousers and used a stick that he found at the scene. So let's recap real quick. What the fuck? Yeah, let's recap real quick. They lured him to the woods at 3 in the morning, pushed him to the ground, kicked him, and stoned him for 45 minutes straight, more than 100 times. They cut his back open with an, uh, with a box cutter, and then they violently raped him with a stick. Finally, Adamson pulls up a large stone, and with all his force, he takes that stone over his head, and he drops it on Eastman's head, oh, making God. sure that he was, in fact, deceased. The boys then stripped the body and buried Eastman, burned his clothes, and using a shovel they brought from home... Okay, keep so that in mind. It was premeditated. Exactly, it's premeditated. They dug a grave, put him in the grave, but then they began to worry that the site would be discovered, so they dug him back up and relocated the body to Benny's grandpa's property. Hmm. Oh, fuck, I'm glad I'm done with that. Wow. Jesus Christ. All right, I'm taking a break. What the fuck? I mean... That's fucking rough. I just don't understand you doing that to your best friend. Friend, someone that you've known since you were five years old. Can I make a prediction? What? Do it. Yeah, Jim. go ahead. You were right about the rape thing. Well, maybe Ben Eastman was he? Maybe he came out to his best friend as being gay, and maybe it was a hate crime. And mm. the older brother and the best friend sodomized him because he was gay. Very interesting. I must say, right now. The older brother, Adamson, has not been to his trial yet. It's going to be in August. Mm. I think August 2nd. It's in my notes. I'll tell you in a little bit. So there is no for sure motive. But we are going to get some to some possible motives. That may... I mean, that sounds plausible. Um, you know what this reminds me of? Have you ever uh, read Kite Runner? Yes. yes. Where they raped that kid? Yes. yes. Did you read A Thousand... I have not read that Sun, one. What is it? A thousand, a, a thousand Splendid Suns. Yeah. I have not read it, but I have it. I haven't read it either. You know, um, Malala Yousafi yeah. has a new book. Well, does she? Yeah, I want to read it. Did also, she just get the Nobel Peace Prize? I, I don't think she got it. I don't know if she got it I or think not. she did the... She didn't get it one year, but I think she got it the year yeah. after. I think it was she like definitely split deserves between it. people. Yeah. She I need got, to read that book, too. It's That's an amazing good. book. I she basically... I still have your Sorry book, too. Oh, so funny. She gets shot in the face by Taliban, and she survives, and she's an amazing person. Yeah, she is. She's, wow. She's a fucking badass. And you know what? I saw the other day. There's this really, um, really well-known author that wrote a book exposing Greg Mortison, the guy that wrote Three Cups of Tea. Oh, yeah. That says his whole his whole charity was a scam and he's been ex- he's been basically taking all his money and the author actually gave him money and he stored it him for it too. Oh my god. So the book is actually called Three Cups of Deceit. I have it. I have Three Cups no, of Tea. I know his book's called and Three I read Cups that. Three Cups of Deceit. Hmm. I want to read it. That sounds Cause fascinating. Cuz I was like Jesus cuz that guy would, you know, went around and built schools in Afghanistan, yeah. Pakistan stuff like that. But so, so did he? So did he not build any schools after all? I don't know. I didn't read the book yet. Mm. I actually oh, don't kind of want to read it, man, because it's like I don't. I mean, it's, you know, what a shitty person if that's true. No. Well, three. What an asshole. I remember reading it and thinking, like, wow, what a, an amazing book. Yeah. <sighs> people suck. Yeah, people do suck. For some reason, they lured him out there. They raped him with a stick. That's a good point about what she said. Benny Marquez was a childhood friend since kindergarten. They did everything together, and the families treated both like their own son. Till this day, a clear motive has never been established. But I do want to say Eastman, Benjamin Eastman, the the guy, the 16-year-old that was murdered and violently raped, was dating Benny's younger sister at the time. Uh, what? So, yeah, they were... You, what was that movie you were watching the other day? 
where the, there was two girlfriends and then one of the girlfriends started dating her brother. Oh, yeah. It was some Netflix or yeah. no, oh, something se- Edge of 17 or something And they like kind of they got jealous. It kind of reminded me of that. I wonder if this was a jealousy thing. But if it was, why get the 21-year-old brother? Like, I mean, they were – did anything end badly in that relationship where they were like, oh, you cheated on my little sister or – That's what I'm thinking. But like I said, the information out there is very scarce. Like the, the court records aren't even public yet, which really pisses me off because – the first thing I want to do when I dive in a case is find those damn court records. Because mm. if you want to get your facts straight, the best way to do that is from actual court records. Yeah. You know, so there's none out there. So I, I basically have, if you go to talkmore.com, I'm putting all my notes on there for you guys. I have every link that I sourced every bit of information from. It's just, it's interesting because when Shannon left that voice message, she said it reminded her of Lord of the Flies, which in like yeah. the way that they kill him, it, it does remind me, you know, uh, it's just like barbaric, but there's no reason for it. It's not, it doesn't seem like they, you know, any nothing was in self-defense. They brought the shovel. It's not like they got into a fight and things got out of hand. Yeah. Like they knew what was going to happen. It, it's just. It's just, it doesn't make any damn sense. Dr. Phil, you know, he was, you'll hear later, he kept saying the word senseless. It doesn't. It, it is. Totally. Because number one, it's premeditated. They called him out there. And both the brothers called him out there to uh, murder him. They brought a damn shovel to dig a grave. Did the brothers have any other, like, history of. No, n- nothing. N- n- no issues with police, drugs, no. violence. Oh, but this case ain't over yet. Oh. Tuesday, July 10th. Now, this is according to uh, to the Lewis County Sheriff's Office. They arrested Kendra Adamson, the 43-year-old mother of both of the boys. What? They arrested her in Yakima, Yakima County. The U.S. Marshal Service actually arrested her. She is the mother of both of the boys. Now, she was being held for investigation of the first degree... Rendering criminal assistance. Hmm. Okay. Basically helping them get away with the crime. Sometimes moms will do anything they can to protect their children. Well, that's what I thought. But was she in on it? Like on the act? No, but she knew about the murder several days before the police found the body and even lied to the detectives about it, which delayed the police Uh. and let her sons flee the area. Now, this is her mother. This is uh, Kendra, hmm. and she's right where she needs to be in handcuffs. Okay, let's move on. Wednesday, July 11th, uh, one day after, Jonathan Adams' fiance Emma Brown, was also charged with two counts of oh rendering word. criminal assistance. The fiance of the 21-year-old also knew about this. What? And didn't say anything. Okay? The heck? Let's see. I thought that was a picture. Yeah, this case is crazy. Now, they have a baby at home. So he's about to get Jonathan? married. Yeah, so he's 21 years old. He's got his fiance, Emma Brown. They're about to get married, and they got a fucking baby at home. And he's out using a stick to rape a 16-year-old. Like, if... if they, all right. a good judge of anyway. character. Yeah. All right. To recap everyone's charges... Thursday, July 12th, the preliminary hearing for Jonathan Adamson. He was charged with four counts, first degree murder, first degree rape, tampering with physical evidence, and unlawful dispose of remains. His bond was set at $10 million. He w- he ain't getting no- out anywhere. Uh, he didn't get out, you know, no way. Benito, his brother, 16 years old, tried as an adult, thank the Lord in heaven, hmm. charged with four counts, first degree murder, first degree rape, tampering with physical evidence, unlawful disposal of remains, bond set at $10 million. Each brother had a bond of $10, $10 million. million. Yeah, yeah, keep them in there. I know, but like, doesn't that seem a little unreasonable? I mean, no, it's just like... They uh, do that so they, they can't, can't get even out. come close to that. Like ten, and that's like, the damn point. Could have put it at one million, probably. No, that's the you point. Know? The mother pleads not guilty. She pleads not guilty. I didn't help them, but then she later changes her plea to guilty. Got a plea deal, huh? Okay. Oh. Uh. No. Well, yeah, but I do want to give the award 
to Mother of the Year. Oh God! <laughs> because and I put that in my notes, Mother of the Year word. Because Kendra, the mother, the forty-three-year-old mother of the boys that violently, brutally raped and stomped Benjamin's head in for forty-five minutes, was there when the boys were burning his clothes. <gasps> Oh, that and bad. as soon as I saw that, I was like, you bitch. Yeah. And then I kept reading. Kendra Adamson also told the boys when they were like, I think someone's going to find the grave. Well, why don't you move <gasps> the body to your grandpa's property? Wow. So she's much more than just being like, oh, maybe yeah. my son, my sons might have done it. I'm going to try to protect them type of a little I mean, it's still a lie, okay. but yeah. she's much more involved in that. I can understand to a point when, all right, let's say this horrible thing happens. Your boys come back. Hey, I did this. I can understand a day or two getting ready to go tell the authorities. Mm-hmm. Getting you know a saying? lawyer. Yeah, stuff doing like stuff that. like that, getting yourself mentally prepared. But telling the boys to move the fucking body to a different location is outrageous. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Mother of the Year Award right here. Now, when the boys actually told the mother, Kendra Adamson, that they killed Eastman, raped him, and then buried his body, quote, she was upset, but she still loves us. Yeah, she was upset. I'm really disappointed in y'all. Fuck <laughs> this dumb hooker. <gasps> July 13th around noon time the older brother's fiance Emma makes bail which makes sense because they have a baby at home you know wait but they have 10 million dollars no her bail was only a, I think her bail was oh, like 10,000 or something oh, okay. yeah her, the, I thought you meant his Sorry. her bail and uh the mother's bail was you know nowhere in comparison the mother thank god she faced 20 years in prison. Wow. Thank God. Maximum sentence. But, she, that's what she got? She's already been tried for it? But she took a plea bargain, oh. agreeing to testify against her own sons. She received 14 months in prison. And what? she's fucking about to get out. Wow. So, I don't know. I mean, at least I don't give a fuck, she's got to, now she's got to testify against her sons. I don't give Assuming. a shit. She needs to be in a damn... Yeah. Electric chair, just like them. This story pisses me this shit off. Now, one of the really sad things about this case is the dad, they were literally best friends. The coroner actually did not allow the dad to see the body because there's so yeah. much damage. I'm sure. Something good that did come out of this case, if you want to call it that, the Miami Dolphins actually honored Ben Eastman by sending his father a signed helmet. Aww. If you see there, like I said, That's they were nice. big Dolphins fans. It the really heartbreaking thing, besides the murder of an innocent boy, is the dad. Like it's it's so heartbreaking because he is literally destroyed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like they were best friends. You could tell, and it's just so shitty, man. Mm, it is really fucking shitty because it's just it's almost like they. <sighs> Here's a. It, it was over seemingly nothing, most likely, like very insignificant. And it's, I mean, sometimes you talk about when we do cases like this, sometimes the murders are random and sometimes they know people, but it's, you know, someone's, you know, jealous or it's usually the husband or whatever. But like in this case, it was someone, like their kids, and it was someone's best friend and they were mm-hmm. 16. Like, what do you mean they murdered someone in such a brutal way? Like, it's just, you, 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 you don't hear things like that very often. Yeah. Let me get to the trial. Attorneys decided to hold two separate cases for the boys. This is uh, benefits the defendant a lot because some evidence doesn't spill over to their case. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But one, one jury could have one opinion, the other could yeah. have the other. February 22nd, Benito was expected to plead guilty. He actually changed his plea from not guilty to guilty. Now, there's something called the Miller Fix. And according to the Washington Defender Association, essentially it mandates that a juvenile 
receives a 25-year sentence for an aggravated murder conviction with an opportunity for release after serving the minimum of 25 years. So he mm-hmm. pleads not guilty so he can skirt off and... Or you mean he pleads guilty? No, no, he pleads guilty so he can get a... You be know, a juvenile. Be, get, be a juvenile. Now his guilty... Twenty-five years. Yeah, so he pleads guilty, but he has to appear as a witness at his brother's up-and-coming trial in, in August. Mm. Uh, Marquez pleaded guilty to amended charges, including murder in the first degree, rape in the first degree, tampering with physical evidence, and unlawful disposal of human remains. And he actually was due back in sentencing a few days ago on March 28th. Jonathan Adamson was also expected to plead guilty, but actually changed his mind at the last minute after working out a deal. Hmm. No one knows really why he changed his mind. The mother pleads guilty to two accounts. So that's kind of weird. the overview of that. Benito Benny Marquez was finally sentenced. Now, he received 34 years for the brutal death of 16-year-old Ben Eastman III. Jonathan, his brother, is going to stand trial this August. And I've got like RSS feed going for both the boys, so... We'll update, you know, Shannon, I'll update you. I mean, you'll probably be the first to know anyway. The defense and prosecution agreed to a sentence of 413 months or just over 34 years in prison. Marquez, now 17. He'll be 51 by the time he's released. But can he be released early? But he can apply for an early release after 20 years because at the time he was under 18. He's still under 18. 18. Now, February 25th, 2019. I don't know if I agree with that, but... No, he should be in a hole. I mean, he's... It's hard because, like, he's so young, and while a 35-year sentence, I mean, it's still it's not a lot for killing somebody, but... At, plus, there were other charges. It wasn't just killing somebody, but it just seems... The mother is testifying against her two boys, and then the younger brother is testifying basically against his older brother. It's like a family that just fucking sucks. Uh, February 25th, 2019, the fiance actually pleads guilty. She pled guilty to misleading authorities and she was represented by an attorney that, and the attorney actually entered an Alford plea, meaning she Hmm. doesn't necessarily agree with the charges against her, but she's pleading guilty because she thinks because it's, the jury's probably going to find her guilty anyway. That's a fucking cop out. You know what I'm saying? Alfred plea. Wasn't that how the um the staircase guy ended up yeah. getting released? It's like, I'm not guilty, but you guys are probably going to make me think I'm guilty. So I'm just going to say I'm guilty. You know, fuck you. Anyway. So was she, is, did she serve any time? Yeah, she's serving time. Uh, February 28th, new charges against Adamson could result in a mandatory life sentence. For the trial in August. Good. So he had four initially. Now he's gotten more. I'm going to read them out. Including first degree aggravated murder. It was just first degree murder. So Mm. to go through them. First degree aggravated murder. First degree murder. First degree kidnapping. First degree rape. First degree assault. First degree rendering criminal assistance. Tampering with physical evidence. Unlawful disposal of remains. And two counts of tampering with a witness. Now he pleads not guilty to those new charges. His trial is currently set to begin the week of August 5th. And would likely span about four weeks. The last thing I want to say is if you... Uh, we're really touched by this case and all the stuff that's going on. The father has a GoFundMe account. It's GoFundMe.com slash Justice for Ben if you want to donate to his calls. You know, because he's probably got expenses too, lawyers and you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't know. But... Funeral costs. And yeah, so I'll put that on the Talk Murder too, so... But, that, I mean, that's the whole case. Wow. Um, Shannon, you're right. We have no faith in society anymore. Thanks. <laughs> That's my hometown murder for Shannon. Talk is pretty much Shannon. Thank you so much. I had a lot of fun researching it, even though it was pretty mm. heartbreaking. And shame on the brother. 21-year-old, setting an example. Fuck you, man. Yeah. All right. The, the The main question I have, and Shannon, you could probably answer this since you're around the area, is, is there a hole big enough to fit all these fuckers in there? <laughs> Every one of them, just throw them in there. With a dump truck, just dump them all for them in there mm. and cover it up. That's my question. I'm sure we could find something that works. 
it's pointless. Like, there was no reason behind it. Like, I mean, it's – they're kids. Like, you're not talking about, like, oh, your wife cheated on you. Like, no, no, no. Like, been, I wonder if they were – It almost – If they were, like, on shrooms or something. That's exactly – I was just going to go there. It was, like, it almost seems like because of the way it went down and how they reacted, like – if they, they were must on have been shrooms under the influence and like or of looked something. at him and, and he looked like a goblin or something because they're well, on shrooms. Well, I wasn't thinking that. I was well, thinking that's like what I was, well, maybe I'm, maybe they were on some sort of drug and it just like blew the situation out of proportion. They weren't in the right mind. Well, but no. Like, if you're on if you're on mushrooms, I mean, you may actually look at him like a goblin. I mean, that that's kind of what I thought at first. I was like, these dudes are definitely on shrooms or something. There's no other reason for it, but. Obviously, they're just a bunch of apparently not. They're not going wackos. down that route with their arguments. So bunch of wackos. Oh, and yeah, and have fun in prison, especially for raping. Like, yeah, I hope you really get it. Yep. You and the Justin Bieber looking asshole. Mm-hmm. Anyway, fuck it. Shannon, thank you so much. This was for you. I hope I delivered all the information I could, but honestly, there's not a lot. L- let me know if you like this, and of course, if you want to hear me do a story for you. Uh, we're calling them taco specials now because if I use the term hometown murder, it just makes you think like you have to do something from your hometown. But you can request you can any, any murder story you, want. you want. Any murder you want. To do that, join our community, uh, our taco shack. Go to talkmurder.com slash join. Become a member. Become a taco supremo and get a t-shirt and get a lot of swag, a lot of love. And I'll do your story for you and shout you out and you can be heard on the podcast like Shannon was. So thank you so much. 